Hi, I'd like to welcome you to week two of the St. Aidan's Institute course on the Book of Common Prayer. Um, we're off to a good start, and um, my hope is that as we go deeper into the readings, it'll uh, become even more engaging and more interesting to see what is happening, what's taking place. Um, in the early English Reformation, because of the role of the monarch, the, the process of the Reformation had greater political influence, and perhaps we saw uh, on the, in the Continental Reformation. Though Luther was indeed co-opted and different German princes aligned either for or against him based on political issues rather than theological ones, um, we see it much more so in England. And we, with Cranmer pushing as far as he really thought he could and still hold on to the blessing of, of King Henry VIII, um, after Henry's death and then and then Cranmer's execution, we see a lot of uncertainty. We see at first a, a drive toward Protestantism. And then with the rise of Mary, who becomes known as Bloody Mary, we see the church swing violently back to Rome. Uh, she has a nickname Bloody Mary because of the arrest and, and killing of 300 uh, priests who refused to return to Rome. Um, after Mary, short reign, thankfully, we see the rise of Queen Elizabeth I, and Elizabeth saw both the dangers of swinging back toward Protestantism, which would lead to many more deaths and fighting and possible civil war, um, but she didn't want to stay with the, the swing to the Church of England, and so she really um, sought a more accommodating solution or compromise, which became known as what we call the Elizabethan Settlement. Um, Part of why the monarchs swung back and forth was when Henry was given the divorce from Mary's mother, uh, Queen Mary then became an illegitimate offspring of the king. And her swinging back to Rome would delegitimize his original divorce and allow her to become a legitimate monarch again. Uh, Elizabeth's motivations were to try to stop the fighting and maintain peace, and so she sought this kind of more middle path of, of the Elizabethan settlement. So that's how we get to the Elizabethan settlements. It's very much politicized, which is unfortunate, but the reformers are working within that context in a very theologically sound and faithful manner. Um, but the reading this week, we want to not spend so much time on the politics of it all, because uh, a lot of it you probably already know, uh, but we want to look at what happens from the Elizabethan settlement all the way up to the Oxford movement of the 18th century. Uh, 19th century. Um, it was a period of stability in terms of theological development, but it was also a period of stagnation and drift. And it's important to understand those movements because it's going to be the Oxford movement or the Tractarian movement that will lead to the rise of Anglo-Catholicism, which really is one of the three streams of Anglicanism today. So our first question this week is going to center on kind of the, that, that movement and that drift of that time period that then sets the stage for a fairly significant change that will come in the 1800s. Um, the second question is going back to the Jones book and the questions of liturgy, the questions of its development from the synagogue service um, into what became the Roman service and then later the, the Sarum rite, which really was the primary influence on Cranmer and the English reformers for the development of the prayer book. So we want to grapple more with what liturgy is and how it came to be what it is in the English church and what the key influences were as it, as it developed and emerged. Because getting a handle on that will also help us to understand why we do what we do today. And when you get asked questions in your parish, it's, well, why do we do this? Why do we do that? Why do we do this? You cannot just give kind of a parental answer, well, I'm a parent and that's why, or the tradition answer, which says, well, we've always done it this way and that's why. You can give a more informed answer um, that will not only allow for a greater appreciation of the, the specific rituals, rubrics, and liturgy practices that we engage in, um, but also people have a better cognitive understanding of why they do what they do, which is very important um, if Anglicanism is to be rich and alive. So that's the work for this week. Um, I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you in the classroom. God bless you.